welcome to the channel. Today's episode, we're gonna be trying to fix a hole in my seat. My 2016 Polaris RMK 155-800. Please mind its appearance. Um, I have it all pulled apart. We've been working on it the past few weeks. This hole in my seat. So we went to AutoZone and we got a leather repair kit. And we're gonna see if I can at least just keep that from spreading because seat covers are expensive and I don't want to replace it. So let's get into the kit. It is uh, made by 3M, leather vinyl repair kit. Um, open it up here. Pretty standard kit. Instructions, some dies in there. There's a swatch of leather, some adhesives, and a couple presses. Should be pretty easy. Pretty easy. I mean, let's just get right into it and skip the talking, right? Put some backing paper behind there. Uh, so I'm just literally gonna cut it, you know, somewhat kind of eye it out. I'll cut a little square. And then they say just fish that in there behind there. They do say that the glue takes four hours to dry. So it looks like this process is gonna be a little bit longer than I want it to be. Um, but hey, I mean, cheap. these covers are like a couple hundred bucks. So for 30 bucks, if I can fix this, why the hell not, right? Um, so yeah, let's get this cut up. Uh, stick it in there and we'll get it glued in and then we'll start the next part. I'm just gonna, I mean, all this is paper clip uh, stapled together. I'm not gonna undo that just because I don't feel like losing all this stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm just gonna cut it straight like this without losing any more of these tools. Cut just, you know, quickly eye it out. Go about halfway across and about, you know, half inch off the so. Just straight cut that. And I mean, it's the backing piece, so it doesn't have to be the straightest thing. Um, I'm gonna try and make it straight, but as you can already tell, it's a little off cut, but whatever, it'll work. So. So, uh, next thing you gotta do is you gotta fish your little piece in here, which you can see by the sizing that should give a nice backing spot for that, you know, for everything to kind of grab to. Um, they say, fish it in there with a little plastic spatula, and then you put your glue on, um, which makes sense, because if you put your glue on there now, not only is it gonna be really stiff and all that, but uh, you're gonna make a mess of the outside of it. So, like I said, listen to the instructions. Mind you guys, I'm also no expert at this once again. This is literally my first time ever trying anything like this, so please do not roast your boy in the comments. But I do appreciate comments. So if you want to leave me a comment in there, I'm not going to tell you no. Just don't roast me, please. And uh, looks like there's actually some good fabric actually like kind of tugging this together. I'm sure it's just like the backing of this leather. So I'm just going to try and clear that out a little bit. So we can try to get this backing behind there. There she goes. Now, you wanna, probably should do it from the center and then going out, actually. You wanna try and obviously get this flat behind here. That's obviously the goal. So, now that it's back there, we're just gonna try and work it around. And I mean, I, if you need to see it, you just kind of like pinch and you can pretty, you know, you can see pretty well in there. Um, try to actually move that up. Oops. Um, and tweezers actually probably be a good thing for this as well. I'm not gonna lie, that'd probably be a, actually, that's actually a trick right there. You kind of just get the, plastic card on it and you can kind of just push it right into place. All right, so that's the trick. Use the point of, uh, you know, the little poker spatula tool here to uh, kind of like get it on the weave. Uh, you can hook it like right on one of the points there and it'll catch a little bit and you can kind of just use that to help push it out um, and push it into place. But 
I'm just kind of making sure it's all flat all the way around. And once again, guys, like, yes, I know I could repair the seat. Like I can get a new seat cover. I can get an aftermarket seat cover, but that's money I don't want to spend. This kit was literally $30. So for $30, if it fixes this, I mean, who's going to give a shit? If there's a little market, I mean, at the end, of it, it's a mountain sled. So I just want, I don't want this to rip all the way open on me. So that's all we're trying to prevent here. spread out there's no crinks or anything like that so um, at this point I'm gonna just take some of the vinyl adhesive put it on the spatula a little bit and then we're just gonna work that around the inside edges here and make sure like everything gets a nice clamping for you know nice and glued down we'll even probably push it a little bit and so that way this can kind of stay as close to tight as possible um, and then we'll move on to the next step looks like I wouldn't need it it's definitely not probably would not be the best but now in hindsight should probably put some tape around here um, kind of help this stuff from not getting everywhere I'm just gonna try and be as you know as neat as possible once again this is a mountain sled, so I mean pretty doesn't get you up the hill but a rip seat is not a fun time. So we're just gonna try to be careful and not mess this up. I'm massage it around. Oh, another fuck up. And now we don't, oh, there we go. Disaster averted. Like I said, you guys are here for my mistakes just as long, you know, for the whole ride, just as whether it goes good or bad. So I am hoping this goes good. Actually, that seemed to have worked decently. So we can try and get a little bit more of that excess off, just like that. Just use the cup as a bit of a squeegee and save that extra stuff. And um, and then I'll put one more over the top. I don't want to press too, down, too hard down on the tape because I don't want, when I pull the tape off, to pull any of the, uh, the vinyl adhesive with it or any, you know, anything like that. So I'm just trying to put light pressure. I'm really just trying to put pressure around and make sure that, you know, the thing will stay clamped. Um, and that's why I'm also using blue painter's tape because blue painter's tape, you know, it's painter's tape. It's gonna come up easy. Hopefully the glue won't stick to it. Now, once again, I'm no expert, but this is just what I'm going with. But I'm gonna call that all the first step. It's pretty simple. Um, so all we really did, before I drop tools everywhere, uh, was you just took pieces of the backing compound, made a little swatch of it. Depending on the size of the cut, the rip, whatever it is in your seat, 
um, fish it behind there with a little spatula here. And then you're just gonna use some of that vinyl adhesive, kind of like you're icing a cinnamon bun or icing a cake um, along the back side of the leather that you're trying to fix. So that way then you can push the backing material up against the foam, make a good secure, uh, good secure connection. And then like I did, um, like I said, the, the stuff takes four hours to dry. So I'm not gonna sit here and hold it or sit here and wait for it to freaking dry. I got better things to do. So I just put a piece of, a piece of masking tape down and we'll see you when it dries. Also, are going to need time to dry, um, but I figured I'd just bring you through, you know, bring you along for the venture at this point. While doing some work, I, uh, I'll do another video uh, recapping all the upgrades I did for this season. Uh, but while I was in here, I did realize that the uh, overfill, uh, sorry, the overflow tab for the coolant bottle had snapped off, um, and it was just laying on the inside here. So I just took some. Good old Loctite, but this is the Ultra Gel. Um, so it kind of is like, it's literally like slow as molasses. The stuff is great. It's almost like silicone. Oh, I just got some on my finger there. Um, because you can see, I, I actually glued this literally two hours ago. It's still a little wet, but it is, that's that's sturdy. Like this thing is not going anywhere. And I, li I mean, I don't know if the camera can really pick it up. I built the super glue up on that. So I'd like to think that that little cheap fix is going to prevent me from you know replacing this bottle the overflow hose all that really does is you know if the coolant rate level does rise up instead of um directly coming out of this hole and then onto your quick drive assembly and all over your belt and stuff that hose just directs it a little bit away into the belly pan and then it's going to vent out somewhere else um so we got that drying up and then the previous owner pulled a fast one on me he uh must have rolled the sled at some point and I didn't realize that it had a crack in the hood. And upon looking at the cost of the hood, because this is the good old black metallic, I don't know if the camera can really pick it up. It's, um, yeah, it's an $800 hood. So I am not replacing this hood. No, thank you. Um, the previous owner obviously did some plastic welding back here. I just should have picked up on it. Um, so I just used that super glue. Uh, put a nice good bead all the way around everything and then I might actually reinforce that with some uh, plastic welding or some more silicone or something like that just to keep this from flexing a lot. Um, the other side, although it has a piece of tape over um, the same area, it doesn't seem to have any cracks in there or whatever. Um, and I guarantee you that's just from rolling the sled. Um, the guy probably just rolled it on some hard pack and then caught on something and you know, there goes a nice little freaking crack in your uh, in your console. So we're gonna let all that stuff dry. Um, I get the belt off right now because I'm gonna go wash this because we I've never washed that belt and that's the same belt that came on it. So I want to put a good wash on that, especially with all the clutch work I did. Um, like I said, I will do a video completely recapping all the new parts that I have put on this thing since owning it, and plus all the new parts that I put on for the new um, 2021 season. Um, so stay tuned for that subscribe um, And if you want click the little bell icon and you'll get notified when that video comes out All right guys, so we're back. I just washed this in uh, a kitchen sink um, I highly recommend you rinse the sink wash and rinse the sink out after your girlfriend your wife your mom Whatever it may be they'll thank you for it um, Not that I made a huge mess because this belt was actually pretty clean But like I said, this is the first time I've ever cleaned this belt. This is the belt that came on this machine so I just wanna, with everything that I've done to it, I wanna give this the best start to the season as possible that, I, that I'm able to give it. Um, the belt, when I took this thing off, I didn't even realize it, but it was actually backwards. Players recommends that, um, and I don't know if it actually really does matter, but if the manufacturer says to do it one way, I'm gonna incline to agree with the manufacturer. Um, the belt was actually backwards, so you couldn't read Polaris, Polaris recommends that it's 180 out, so that way you can read Polaris. It's pretty easy. Um, you know, if the belt ends up going this year, I'm not too worried about it. They're not that bad. I think they're like 180 bucks. It sucks, but it is what it is. I do have a spare one underneath the hood, and I think I got a, a second, or, you know, a second spare lying around somewhere. Um, so whatever, we just throw it in the trailer, and if it pops, it pops. It's no big deal. So let's get this uh, 
get the belt installed. As you guys can tell, this is actually a new track. And like I said, I will be going over a full build for this season in my next video coming soon. Please subscribe. Um, but while I had the skid out of sled, I greased all the fittings. And because the Polaris is that come with the piggyback shocks, the, the back skid shock has a piggyback reservoir. The only problem with that is unless you have a right angle uh, grease gun attachment, you aren't gonna get to this fitting. Um, I ended up taking the shock off to get that fitting and then I was like, you know, why'd I even do that? I just replaced the fitting with a 90 degree fitting and now I can grease it whenever the heck I want. So the whole skid's all been greased. Um, I even have some Polaris touch up paint. So I touched up the rails and the spindles and everything just to give it, you know, that, that extra little bling factor. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, catch you guys when the seat dries. but everybody's seen tape be pulled off. So I'm sorry, I missed it. A um, little new at the whole YouTube thing. But as you can see, this is uh, it's dried up pretty well. I actually think I'm going to um, take another like couple spatula fulls of that adhesive just to level this off a little bit. The, uh, the instruction says it's not a bad thing to try and have that as level as possible. Um, I guess it's gonna help for the coloring and the heat step. So it seems we've taken pretty good. Um, hopefully, like I said, I'm hoping this really works. If it does for 30 bucks, like that's mint. So. A little... No, you're not trying to like layer this on here, guys. Legit, I'm just trying to fill in the, uh, the couple holes that are there. It doesn't take much. Just a little bit, just that. Like I said, scrape the excess off, put it back in your container. That way you get, you can fix another freaking leather hole. If I put another hole in the seat, if I put a hole in my seat, uh, in, my, in the seat of my truck, whatever it may be, you got, you know, product that is still good. So we'll let that dry some more and then we'll move on to the color step. All right guys, so we're back. Uh, it's a new day in here, obviously. Um, so the only thing left we have to do with the seat repair is just do the coloring. Um, so let's get right into it and get this project knocked out. All right guys, so as I went over before, uh, it's a black seat, so we're gonna use the black color right here. Essentially it's the same thing as the adhesive. It's kind of like a icing glue putty type thing that you're just gonna put on here to make it color smooth. Um, the step after that is the texturing, which none of these texture patterns actually match up with the texture of the seat. So I'm just gonna pick the closest one and try it, but I know it's not actually gonna match the seat. I really just want that color to be black. Um, and as you can see, I mean, this rip is not going anywhere. This thing is freaking sturdy. So should be good with that. So let's get it colored and let's get it done. All right guys, so it's pretty easy. I'm just gonna open up this color. Without making a mess everywhere. We're gonna grab our little spatula here again, make sure it's clean. I'm just gonna take a little dabble of that. Just gonna pretty much like icing your cake. Just gonna color that all, all that white stuff in. Try not to make a mess. And I'm just going to try and make it look a little less noticeable. I mean, I understand like any real person would look at this and be like, hey, what's that mark? But you know, as long as the seat doesn't rip, I'm happy. It's really all I care about. Uh, we're uh, pretty spread it over right there. Put a little bit more on top of it. And then we'll uh, move on to this next step. And uh, I think. Just like that, should be good. And same thing, we're just gonna use the cap as a spatula, try and save the rest of it. A squeegee, not spatula, I should say. And that uh, should be all we need with this shit, so we'll put it all back and uh, move on to the next step. The instructions, which once again, I highly suggest you read the instructions, try and follow them to the T, because 
He's going, I don't work for 3M. I'm just shooting from the hip on this one. Um, so they actually suggest you heat this up with an iron. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to heat it up with a heat gun. And then all you got to do is use the uh, grain texture release papers here, which you can see they're all marked. Um, you just find the closest grain to the seat, which none of these grains really match up well with the seat. I'm going to just pick the closest one and just going to send it. Um, and like I said, this is a mountain sled. It's not going to be a pretty repair. I just want that rip from Taryn anymore, which it's already done. Now we're just trying to make it a little bit more prettier. So let's get into it. So I'm just gonna try and heat this up for like, I don't know, 30 seconds. This heat gun gets really hot. Um, the instruction says 300 degrees, so I'm gonna guess about 30, 45 seconds, and this should be pretty close up to temperature. We'll give it a shot, we'll see what it does. If it's too cold, we'll, you know, we'll get some more heat on there. If it's too hot, we'll let it sit out a little bit. But just kinda, honestly, guessing at this point, but it should be good. That's, that's actually pretty warm right there, to be honest with you guys. Um, probably just fucking send it like that, so let's give it a shot here. Now, close screen paper is this one. And then I'm just going to put this over. And it says just lightly massage this around. Don't keep it in one spot. And this is what well, it's doing is tr is drying that color but at the same time it's imprinting the design in there so the instructions actually say to draw the size of the mark on the backing paper but i mean i pretty much knew where that was so there was really no need to uh mark that on the paper and that actually looks like it worked pretty good i'm just gonna hit the bottom here a little bit more and uh yeah i mean I, guys i think Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's a lot better than what it was. I might try and do another heat press just to get that, you know, you can still see it's a little bit kind of like white in there. So I might put a little bit more of the uh, the black in and then heat press it a little bit more. But I mean, for the most part guys, we're, this looks freaking great if you ask me, honestly. Compared to what it was, this is for 30 bucks in, in comparison to replacing the whole cover or the whole seat, $30. A plus in my book. First coat is still on there. It's pretty much dried up from the heat press. There is a little bit of uh, wet material on here still, but I think we should still be fine. And you really don't need much on this guys like i thought i'd be using a lot more of this kit like i barely used anything of it so just be very sparing and keep that in mind because you don't need a ton just a little bit so that looks pretty good right there and put the cap back on this we'll get the heat gun out and we'll uh heat that up again Honestly, the heat gun trick completely worked. You really don't need an iron. You just need something to get this thing hot. Um, just be careful you don't get it too hot because you will burn your fabric on the other side. So, get this back up to temperature and uh, press it and we'll be done with this, guys.
So I'm gonna take, take our uh, relieving paper here again. I'm actually gonna pick a clean spot so that we don't make a mess. Let's try like that. And once again, we're just gonna go to town pressing this on here. Try not to touch the leather with the hot part because you will burn it. Or uh, at least melt it, which is not good. I'm just gonna work this around. Circular motions, we're gonna do some straight lines. Kind of just make sure you just really kind of rub this stuff in as best you can. Look at that, guys. Looks pretty freaking good. Got one more little dry spot right down here. So, yeah. Let's see here. I can just go like this. Get that last spot. Pretty good, pretty good. Now you guys can see that there is still some whiteness in there. Um, I'll be honest, I actually did put a smidgen, a dab of super glue in there too to kind of help this from all spreading. And that's all that is. Um, but honestly, I'll probably just take a Sharpie and put a little piece of Sharpie on there and you won't even know. So we'll, uh, we'll let this all dry up overnight and it should be pretty good. Just like that, and we're done. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna let this dry overnight, but this is, as you can see, it's pretty tough. Um, doesn't look that ugly, so it should hold together for the season. I'll let you, keep you guys updated if it fails, but for, like I said, for $30, to be able to fix this like $300 seat cover or $600 seat, I'll take the $30 option all day long. I don't know about you guys. So uh, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. I will be posting more videos to come. Like I said, I will be doing a sled overview soon of all the parts on my sled right now. Um, and I'll be doing more repair how-to videos and we'll also be posting some riding videos coming soon. So please stay tuned and uh, we'll look to see from you in the future. Thanks.